scriptures. I love that. Eloquent, mighty in the scriptures. Know the word. Amen. Came unto Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only what? The baptism of John. He only knew the baptism of John. Let's keep going. And he began to speak what? Boldly in the synagogue, who with Aquila and Priscilla. Oh, right, boy, boy, boy. If I can get on that one. And Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Mm -hmm. See, he only knew the baptism of John, but he still wasn't ashamed to speak boldly about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look, when you got Islam or other false doctrines coming up to you, and you know you don't read your word that well, but you can't tell me God ain't touched you, right? And then you tell my man, what does it mean in this scripture? What does it mean in that scripture? You just need to look at the bowl and say, you know what? I may not know what that means, but I do know what this means. My heart says Jesus is God. Amen. That's it. Amen. You all pull out many scriptures, go to as much revelation as you want, go to all this and go to all that, but look at them and say, but you ain't going to get me to deny Jesus. Jesus is Lord of my life. Amen. Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. You don't know nothing now. Be bold enough to tell them, you are not going to turn me to an Allah, a Buddha, a Confucius. Because <laughs> ain't no other God but Jesus. Who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Jesus. Right there. Go. Right there. Amen. Go to Acts 19. We right there anyway, right? We're going to keep on reading Acts 19. Then. Where did I leave off at on 19? My page must have got there. I want to go all the way to verse 8. Did I go all the way to verse 8? No. Let's keep going then. And disciples, let's start again. And it came to pass that while Apollo said, yeah, where am I at? Acts 19. I ended at 26. So now I was right. We're going to 19 now. Who okay. threw me off? He threw me off then. All right, Acts 19, verse 1. And it came to pass. Acts 19. And it came to pass. Verse 1. Danny, if you don't stop it. Yes, sir. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, and he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily, or word verily means truly, baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogues and spake boldly for the space of what? Three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Look at that. He stayed there three months talking about Jesus. I don't want to get too deep in the, in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, because I truly believe in it. And it's not just the evidence of speaking in tongues. There's many ways to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. First way is, except Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, and immediately the Holy Ghost comes inside you. Hello, you've been baptized. But if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost ain't living in you. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. Y'all get anything out of what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 3, look at uh, verse 10 and 12. To the intent that now unto the principalities and the powers and heavenly places might be known by the church that manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have what? Boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. But we have act boldly. I mean, we have access to Jesus Christ. Come to the throne boldly. You ain't got to be scared to come to God. Who are you afraid of? It blows my mind. Y'all more afraid, and maybe you ought to be more afraid of the Lord, because he has the power to cast.
ask you to help. But walking around here, you fear the devil more than you fear God. That blows my mind. The devil don't have that kind of power. You give him power when you decide not to get up and be successful. You give him power when you decide not to operate in the gift God has given you. You give him power when you decide not to love. You give him power when you decide to hate. When you give him power when you decide to be a failure. You give him power when you decide to go ahead and not face your circumstances. That's how you get a devil power. You give him power when you decide a bottle is going to make me soothe myself tonight. A woman is going to make me comfortable tonight. A man is going to make me all right tonight. Some crap is going to make me paranoid tonight. And that's all I'm going to do. Amen. You give him power. You give him power when you decide to steal from someone who loves you. And manipulate to get what you want. You gave the devil power. Amen. Amen. Go to chapter 6 of Ephesians. Look at verse 19 and 20. 6, 19 and 20. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth, what? Boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. See, let's keep reading. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You can't understand God until you get born again. That's the mystery. You wonder why people don't understand the world or understand this or understand that, because they ain't born again. The mystery is only revealed to those who accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Everybody else is full of knowledge. That's it. But in order to know the mystery of God, you got to accept him. Because he only gives it to his children. Amen. Oh, that person's weird. Where they get that from? They got it from God. Because they want to hear. Einstein ain't got nothing on you when you accept Jesus Christ. Hello, I don't know where that came from, but that was good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. How many of you have really been touched by Jesus? Amen. I mean, you can literally say that Jesus has touched your life. Amen. No one. Amen. 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 First Timothy three. And look at verse thirteen. First Timothy three thirteen. <laughs> For they that have used the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good degree and the great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now why did I use that up? That ain't high deacon in the Baptist church who got a title and stuck on himself. And a lot of times that happens in the church. As soon as you give a man a title, his chest puffs up. Because men look for titles. You know, men, men are identified by what they do. And if they're not doing what they are called to do, or work or do what they're supposed to do, a man's self-esteem goes down because we're called to do something. Amen. 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 As soon as we're not able to do it, our esteem drops. Mm -hmm. We're going to find that esteem somewhere else. It's like I told a friend of mine, you know, when I go through depression, and yes I do, I get privately with the Lord. <laughs> I shut my door, turn off my phone. Nobody can contact me. You know why? Because I don't need your scripture. Amen. I don't need your spiritual wisdom. You know why? All I need to do is be with God. Because God ain't going to condemn me with a scripture. God ain't going to throw law and theology at me. You know what God going to do to me when I get in that state of mind that I want to act stupid? All he does is come and loves me. So I get in his arms and in his bosom and say, Jesus, just love me right now. Because I'm about ready to act a fool. So come on, just love me, Lord. Because only his love can handle my pride. Yeah. Only his love can handle my sin. Yeah. And only his love understands my love. So what does that mean? Only he knows my heart. But if you call too many people around you, they're going to condemn you with a scripture. They're going to condemn you with theology. They're going to throw the law at you. They're going to tell you you're wrong anyway. 
I'd rather have Jesus tell me I'm wrong than you tell me I'm wrong because I'm too proud for to receive it from you anyway. Amen. Hello, can I keep this real or what? Yes. So I go shut my door, get it private, shut up my phone, and then as soon as I turn it on, the first voice I hear, hey, Jesus, is Ron. Hey, brother, you know, that's what he <laughs> Amen. Because you know why? Because everybody in my past recognized me as this one thing. They know when I used to shut off my phone, I was getting hot. If Warren's phone was off, Warren was somewhere getting blasted. And they still think that today. Now, ain't that a shame? Ain't that a shame? Because they said when he used to do that, he was somewhere getting hot. But they forgot, I got a new way of getting high. I get high on Jesus. I get high on the Holy Ghost. I don't need you to condemn me. I'm going somewhere and hide from you. Yeah, I used to hide with a bottle and a crack. But now I hide with the word of God. And learn to encourage myself. Because you don't have the words to do it. Amen. Because half the time people want to talk to you, they only want you to agree with them in their mess. No, no, no. I just need to find somebody who won't agree with me while I'm acting stupid. No, I'm going somewhere where I know they ain't going to agree with me. In the loving arms of Jesus, only he knows how to handle me. And he knows how to handle you too. Amen? Amen. Where did I leave off? I was at uh, Timothy 3, right? And I read 13. Yes. Amen. So deacon there just means sir. So don't put no high title on it. It's just servant. How many of you serve? <laughs> when you're driving a man, you're deaconing. <laughs> when Jerry's in there cooking, he's deaconing. Amen. Amen. When people are sweeping around the church, they're deaconing. That's what deacon means. Serve. You got to start serve. Start deaconing. And watch God raise you up. But you got to be willing to die to self. When you're cleaning the woman's home, digging it. When you're cleaning it here, you're digging it. When you're cleaning that bathroom, you're digging it. And you're being bold. Because you're saying, Lord, while I'm cleaning here, you clean me. There you go. Amen. Amen. Ain't that good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See? I think Skipper got it. Amen. Hebrews 4. That's how I got out of my mess when they put me on discipline in the drug program. Made me do this. I was too proud. Man, I'm an electronic engineer. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to do dishes. <laughs> they woke me up 4 o'clock every morning and did the dishes. When everybody else yeah. had six. <laughs> but I had so many crack marks in the palm of my hand from pushing. And I know y'all know what pushing is. Pushing that screen to the other and to get some old that residue. But I would stab myself in the palm of my hand. I had a, you can't even see it. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. But this thing used to be all the way up and down there. From pushing the crack pipe. Yeah. But as I began to wash them dishes, and they would put bleach in them dishes, and I began to just praise God because I was too prideful to let them win. So I'm going to get up, do this discipline, and, and just praise the Lord. And one day I looked at my hands. I said, oh, my God. And the Lord said, clean hands and a pure heart I will not despise. Oh. 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 And I said, do my working and do my doing diligently and being bold and clean them dishes for all those men. And then, right, they leave no food on them. <laughs> them big old pots. <laughs> I didn't know I was scrubbing myself. Yeah. Come on now. Oh. Ooh, the boy. Oh. And y'all afraid to go in there and clean. God has given you opportunity to clean you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, that's too deep. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4.14. And then they couldn't get me off of doing dishes. I wanted to do dishes all the time now. <laughs> Let me in the kitchen. Sure. I do them. Got no problem. Then they sent me up to God's Mountain, what we call Teen Challenge God's Mountain. You know, you stay up there at 300 men just praising God. Then I said, okay, I'm going to get prideful again. And I'm going to tell them I'm an electronic engineer technician. They said, no, you ain't. You're going into janitorial. You're going to clean toilets. <laughs> no, I ain't. 300 men. Big men, too. <laughs> I said, no. Oh, yeah. I got to cleaning them toilets. And I mean, cleaning toilets for men ain't no picnic, lady. For 300 men. Broke me. Broke me. 
know what I mean? Then God opened up the Bible study. I said, now nah, I need you to teach the Word. Amen. Woo! Now you want to go from cleaning toilets to teaching the Word. <laughs> Woo! No, because you got to learn to be thinking, sturdy, stinking sin before you can clean up anybody. you got to learn to clean the dookie off of you. Yeah. Oh, did they get that? Amen. So I had to learn to clean the dookie before I could teach somebody how to get clean. Y'all ain't hearing me. Oh, is that good? They got to learn to get in the dookie first. Amen. See, everything has a spiritual principle. You know, my refusal to clean the dookie, I wouldn't have went nowhere. But I learned to clean the dookie. I know that sounds crazy. Are you going to clean Dookie? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, then clean it off of you first. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And watch God bless you. Amen. And he will, believe me. Yeah, he will. Hebrews 4. Look at verse 16. 4, 16. And it says, Let us therefore come what? Boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Amen. 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 What, what else did I want to go here? Uh, woo! But you got to learn to come boldly to the throne of grace. And I always tell people all the time, grace is God's empowering presence. Grace is God's empowering presence. Amen. If you're with God, you got his grace and it's empowering presence to do his will and purpose for your life. So therefore, if you're born again, you got the grace of God. His empowering presence to help you through. So don't worry about your neighbor. You always got him with you. Amen. Amen? Amen. He's always there with you. Let's look at this. I like what Paul said. Let's go to, uh, no, let's look at this. The only way to be bold is not to look back at your past. <laughs> The only way to be bold is not to look back at your past. Some of you are coming in here carrying your past with you. All kinds of luggage. You know, Samson Knight boy is getting rich off of you. So why? Because you got all that luggage. You know? I ain't going to get on her. I was getting ready to talk about bag lady, but I love her. But you see her carrying all that luggage. That's her issues. How much luggage you carry? Everywhere they go, there's a bag lady everywhere, so it don't matter. Mm -hmm. So nothing got tons of bag ladies. <laughs> Amen? I had to leave my luggage in Philadelphia before I came here. <clears throat> How much luggage you brought with you? A lot. A lot. And watch this. Every time I see the same people out there at that table, yeah. <laughs> when I see all the same people out there at that table, just loading up bags and bags and bags of clothes like they got a closet to put them in. <laughs> All they doing is storing up more luggage. You're picking up more issues. Amen. Drop that stuff off. Amen. That was just something. But watch this. Because you can't be bold for the kingdom of God. Go to Luke 9.62, one of my favorite scriptures. We get ready to come to close. Luke 9.62. It's the last verse of that chapter. You can't be bold looking back at your past. Because your past will always held you captive. And Amen. Jesus knows that too. So what does he say in that last Amen. verse of 962? And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, huh, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. That means you can't come unto Christ and act like you're willing to do the work of God and then give up. It ain't no good once you start with Jesus. You know, he said, better for you to stay on back there. Why? Because you look like Lot's wife. Oh, hello. Oh, 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 oh. What? Well, that's the truth. What happened to her? She turned into a pillar herself. Matter of fact, we're going to get ready to go there. But go. We're going to go there in a minute. Go to, go to Philippians chapter 3. You hit me with that one. We're going to go there in a minute. Go to Philippians chapter 3 first. But you can't keep looking back. Once you make a conscious decision yeah. to go forward, yeah. fight for it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you fight for it? With boldness. No matter how many times you fail, fall forward. See, 
You didn't hear that, did you? You keep falling backwards. Far start falling forward. At least you're making your way. One of my wisest teachers told me that man, you keep on, you keep relapsing and smoking that dope. When are you gonna stop falling on your butt and fall forward on your face? Smoke the dope and fall forward. I said, wow, that sounds smart. Why would I keep falling forward? At least I'm getting to my destination. Maybe we're a little bit out of time, but I'm getting it. Amen. Philippians 3. And y'all familiar with this verse? How Paul said it. I love this one too. Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14. Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, Paul said, I haven't made it. But this one thing I do, forgetting, hello, those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are where? In front. Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I ain't made it, but I keep pressing. Pressing on. <coughs> well, as Skip said, you keep looking back, you're going to be like Lot's wife. So we're going to finish with Lot's wife. Go to Genesis 19. Genesis 19, and we come to a close. Genesis 19. Genesis 19. Look at verse 17 first. 1917. 1917. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look where? Not behind you. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be what? Consumed. Right? What is this? The angels talking to them. No, go ahead, where's the verse at? 26. Now look at 26. But his wife looked back from behind him. Oh, my goodness. And she became a what? Pure soul. You know why she's looking back with y'all? She's looking for her familiarity. <coughs> she was getting ready to be taken to a new place. No one wants to change. She loved what she was having, all that homosexuality and crazy crap. You know? She loved it. It was time for a change and she was scared of it. And it says she looked back from behind him. That means she looked, she wasn't keeping her eye on her head. She was looking past who's ahead of her. Who's ahead of you? So she looked past and turned into a pillar of salt. Because she wanted what she was familiar with. You're familiar with sin more than you are the glory of God. Come on now. You know how to sin better than you know how to be saved. Amen. God ain't stupid. It was 33 years before I got born again. It still took another 10 before I even woke up. And I'm still struggling. Because I recognize who loves me. Amen. But when I was stuck, or stupid, sitting on silly, waiting on dumb, is because I kept looking for what I was comfortable with. Somebody heard me. I needed a pipe. Somebody said something wrong against me. I needed a hit. Somebody said they liked me. I wanted to lay up with them. Somebody said this. I wanted that. Amen. And all Jesus would do is say, I love you. Come on to me. I love you. I'm waiting on you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm ready. Because I was a baby. Well, well. <laughs> but are you going to be bold enough to speak to the mystery of God in Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. But one of the things you've got to always remember, too, and I wrote this down, stop letting the devil remind you of your past. Amen. You know how you stop letting the devil remind you of your past? Remind him of his future. And you know you already won the war. You only won the battles. Jesus won the war for you at the cross of Calvary. So you've got to stop letting that devil bring your past up and tell him the moment that past kick in, you need to remind him of his future. What's his future, y'all? Hey, say, devil, you can tell me anything, but you're going to hell. Remind him of it. He'll get right away from you. Amen? Amen. So y'all going to be bold enough to remind the devil of his what? Where he's gone? His future is what? Hell! And your future is heaven if you accept Jesus Christ.
Christ, as Lord said. So, in my closing, I would not leave without offering uh, anyone the call of salvation for the redemption of their sin. So if you want Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior in your life, just repeat this prayer after me. And be bold enough to say it. Amen? Let all of hell hear you claim Jesus. Amen? Just listen to this prayer and follow after me. Just say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for, saving me. for saving me. I confess, I confess with, my mouth, with my mouth the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus and believe. Thank you.